This video shows how to combine soluble proteins with a membrane and optional membrane proteins. In this video, we'll show how to combine the three solution proteins from the previous video with the GABA-A structure 508F from the first Amber Force Field video demo. Since we will be using multi-component assembler to construct the membrane lipids, to obtain 508F, we'll only follow the Amber Force Field video demo through the orientation step. For membrane structures, multi-component assembler uses the same orientation with respect to the membrane that the uploaded structure uses. In other words, we should ensure that the structure is properly positioned within the membrane before uploading it to multi-component assembler. This one looks correct, so we'll download the oriented structure at this step. In the downloaded project directory, the orientation step writes charm CRD coordinates, although it does not write a PSF. Since Membrane Builder doesn't make any structural changes between PDB reading and orientation, we can use the PDB reader PSF. Multi-component assembler uses the file name to determine which files belong to the same structure, so we must ensure the file names are the same before the file extension. Furthermore, since 508F includes a heterogen that needed parameterization with CGenFF, we also need to include the topology and parameter files that were produced by CGenFF. This is also true when GAFF, or OpenFF, is used for ligand force field generation. Unlike the PSF and CRD files, we do not need to rename the RTF and PRM files. To combine the 508F structure with our solution proteins, upload the 508F, PSF, CRD, RTF, and PRM files to multi-component assembler together with the PSF and CRD files that we used in the previous video. If we uploaded everything correctly, we should see the four protein structures on the next page. By default, every component is given the solvated component type. Since we know that 508F is a membrane protein, we should change its component type to membrane. Having at least one membrane component reveals the membrane component options. These options are also shown if we select Generate Membrane for this system, which allows us to combine soluble proteins with a membrane even if we don't have any membrane proteins. While soluble protein density can be controlled by volume fraction, membrane protein density is controlled by area fraction, which represents the fraction of a membrane surface area that is occupied by uploaded membrane components. If you upload more than one membrane component, you can control the ratio of membrane components with respect to each other with the ratio of membrane components option. Its behavior is similar to the ratio of components option for solvated components, except that the ratio of membrane and solvated components are considered separately. When a system contains a membrane, a new option to exclude above and below membrane appears, which prevents any solvated component from being placed within some distance of the membrane region. While packing molecules, multi-component assembler assumes a typical membrane thickness of 40 angstroms, but you can increase this if you know that your membrane will be larger. For this demo, we'll set the exclude distance to 10 angstroms. That is, any solvated component is excluded from minus 30 angstroms to positive 30 angstroms along the z-axis. Note that the membrane center is assumed to be at z equals 0, and that the membrane normal is along the z-axis. While the box XY length option controls the length of the X and Y dimensions, the water thickness option controls the length of the Z dimension. Water thickness refers to the amount of water added above and below the membrane. Again, multi-component assembler assumes that the membrane thickness is 40 angstroms, so the total length of the Z dimension is equal to 40 plus 2 times the water thickness. To achieve the same 10% volume fraction of solvated proteins used in the previous demo, we'll use the ratio of components option with an exact volume fraction. Set the volume fraction to 0.1, water thickness approximation to 60 angstroms, and box XY length to 150 angstroms, and click the Calculate System Size button. Since 508F is quite large, we'll see that the X and Y length should be at least 141 angstroms to prevent the protein from interacting with its own image. Once the system size and composition are determined, click the Next button to pack the components into one box. On the Lipid Selection page, make sure to check that the packed structure looks reasonable by clicking View Structure.
In the Amber Force Field demo for 508F, we used a lipid ratio of 1 cholesterol to 4 POPC in both leaflets, and we'll use the same ratio here. If the calculated number of lipids looks reasonable, click Next to begin lipid packing. Due to the large size of this membrane, it will take around 30 minutes to finish packing the lipid spheres. If lipid packing fails at this step, there are a few possible explanations. If we chose a bad lipid composition that is hard to pack with our membrane proteins, then we should return to the lipid selection page. If instead there are collisions between the lipid spheres and the solvated components, we should return to the system size determination page and increase the size of the membrane exclusion region to prevent the solution proteins from being placed near the membrane. If lipid packing succeeded, we can select ions to include in the solvent. For more information about ion selection, see the previous video demo, or see the demo for building custom solvents. In this case, we will simply use the default options for 0.15 molar potassium chloride and click Next to replace the lipid spheres with all atom lipid molecules. If we uploaded uncharged solvent molecules, this is where we would control their concentration. Since we have only water and ions in our solvent, we simply click the Calculate Solvent Composition button, then Next to begin assembling the solvent and ions. When that completes, click View Structure to ensure that your system looks reasonable. Again, it is fine for some components to stick out of the primary box, because corresponding cutouts on the opposite ends ensure that there are no collisions between primary atoms and image atoms. Finally, you can generate simulation inputs in the same way that you would for Membrane Builder.